The recent delivery of the Ground Support Equipment or GSE hardware to Boca Chica has generated a lot of excitement among space enthusiasts and the public at large. The GSE hardware which includes water deluge equipment will play a crucial role in the launch and landing operations of the Starship spacecraft. The exact timing for the setup of this equipment remains unknown, but there are speculations that it could happen either before the Booster 7 static fire test or before the orbital test flight. In the meantime, Ship 24 was recently brought to the Rocket Garden, possibly to protect it from any potential anomalies during the static fire. This move has also fueled speculations among the public about the readiness of the Starship for its next mission. One of the most frequently asked questions about the Starship is how it will be returned to the launch site after a successful mission. The answer to this question is that the Starship can be lifted by a self-propelled modular transporter or SPMT and rolled back to the launch site. This technology allows for a seamless and efficient movement of the spacecraft reducing the time and effort required to return it to the launch pad for its next mission. Recently, the payload capacity of the Starship was updated on the SpaceX website. The new numbers indicate that the Starship can carry up to 150 tons for the recyclable alignment and 250 metric tons for the expendable variant. This is a significant update from the earlier information on the website which simply stated that the Starship had the ability to carry an additional 100 metric tons to Earth orbit. This update demonstrates the growing capabilities of the Starship spacecraft and highlights the importance of the continued investments in space exploration and technology. At the launch site, we found Booster 7 and Ship 25 waiting for their testing. Ship 25 is located at Pad B, also known as the suborbital pad. The next step for Ship 25 is the static fire test, but not much progress has been made on it recently as SpaceX focuses on preparing for the debut launch of a full orbital staff. It is unknown whether Ship 25 will be rolled back to the launch site or it will remain at Pad B during Booster 7 static fire testing, which could involve some high energy events. The much anticipated full 33 engine static fire with Booster 7 has not happened yet, with road closures being scheduled and cancelled over and over again. One of Booster 7's hydraulic pressure units is still unaccounted for. Despite the delay in testing, progress continues to be made on various key components of the launch system. One issue that has arisen is the missing hydraulic pressure unit, which is critical for the proper operation of the engine thrust vector controls. However, this issue is expected to be resolved in future iterations as electrically powered thrust vector controls will be utilized instead. In addition to addressing this issue, there has also been a significant amount of work done on the orbital launch mount. The improvements include upgraded wiring and cabling at the top of the mount, as well as a fresh coat of paint to protect the legs against corrosion and damage from the powerful 33 Raptor engines. Another area of focus has been the chopsticks, which play a crucial role in the launch process. Specifically, there have been improvements made to the hydraulics that control their opening closing and horizontal movement during lifts, ensuring a smooth and precise operation. With these updates and improvements, the launch system is well on its way to being ready for its next mission. The dedication and hard work of the team have ensured that the launch system remains on track, despite the challenges encountered along the way. The new construction to the west of the orbital launch pad has sparked speculation among industry experts with some speculating it could be an extension of the tank farm or the location for the water deluge hardware that has recently arrived at the site. The build site has been bustling with activity, as various sections have been relocated, including the nose cone of Ship 27 which was recently moved to a new location near the mid-bay. With Ship 26 already fully stacked in the high bay, it's only a matter of time before more stacking operations take place. SpaceX is not just building their starships and boosters, they're also constructing a massive assembly line to support the production of these futuristic vehicles. The purpose of testing the latest ships, ships 27 and 26, remains unknown. However, some believe they could be used to test orbital refueling or fuel depots, a crucial component of the Artemis program. The company is also ensuring their vehicles are in top working condition as evidenced by the recent replacement of three Raptor engines in Booster 7. 
The faulty engines were identified through inspection and testing, and one of the replacement engines was even transported to the launch pad on a flatbed. SpaceX is limited in terms of available space at their construction site and had to make some changes. As a result, prototype Ship 22 was disassembled to make room for Ship 24. The area known as the Ring Yard, which lies between the Mid Bay, High Bay, and construction tents, now holds a number of barrel sections for future starships and boosters. Some of these sections have already been equipped with thermal protection tiles. There's even a booster aft dom hiding among the barrels. On Friday, a barge arrived from Kennedy Space Center carrying ground support equipment that was previously used at the outdated Starship launch pad at Historic Complex 39A. The equipment on the barge included smaller tanks, which are believed to be used for water as well as large pipes and manifolds. The barge also carried three large liquid nitrogen tanks, which are likely intruded for use at the test site where SpaceX wants to conduct testing of prototypes and tanks. What is the schedule for the installation of the water dilute system in Boca Chica? It's not clear, but it's possible that it could be done prior to the orbital test flight. Meanwhile, Booster 9 is currently being worked on in the Mega Bay as part of its test campaign, which includes the installation of equipment for electrical thrust vector control and the Raptors. It's possible that the cryo testing of boosters and ships could be moved to the Massey test site in the future to free up space at the launch site for more launches. A new thrust puck, which is the rear of the aft dome where the center engines attach, was delivered to the site. It's unfortunate to see the forward dome of Ship 22 being scrapped, but it's necessary in order to make room for future prototypes. This is all for this video. 